What's up, motorheads? We're about to take a look at every single EV that's scheduled to finally go on sale this year. Yep, every single one. So if you're thinking about or interested in possibly picking up a brand new EV this year, warm up a jar of pub cheese, grab some club crackers, and just get comfortable for a sec. All right, so starting off with the IPO sweetheart story of 2021, and I'm talking about Rivian. So everyone's already sort of crowned this truck version, the R1T as truck of the year and all that jazz. And yeah, look, it's good. It's very good. But you probably already know that and you probably already know that the SUV version is scheduled to go on sale sometime this year also. So along with everything on this list, keep in mind that literally everything seems to be getting delayed these days. Look, anyway, this is mechanically very similar to the R1T with 316 miles of range with a 400 plus mile option, big battery coming at, I don't know, some point. Power and acceleration is huge and this thing just sort of checks all the boxes you could possibly want. All right, only thing, it's a big boy. It's like a big, big boy. Size wise, it is almost identical to the just gigantic BMW X7 for reference. A smaller truck and SUV, the R2s are currently under development, but it's going to be a while. Pricing for this thing is going to start around 70k and look, yeah, I, this is one of the most anticipated SUVs in a long time and it's, it's a winner. We know it's already a winner. Let's just see how quickly Rivian can ramp up production because it's probably going to be really hard to get your hands on one of these unless you're already like way up there on the waiting list. All right, so we just dropped a detailed look at this little Korean sweetheart. So if you're interested in this guy, you should really give that a solid watch. Anyway, this shares its platform with the equally cool Hyundai Ioniq 5, but like it's completely different styling wise, obviously. All right, pricing starts at about 40 grand for the entry level single motor version. That's gonna have a range of about 232 miles. It's got a little tiny motor. And then it goes up to about 60K for the big dog GT with, get this, almost 600 horsepower. And I sort of love that. I mean, look, the GT is almost like the Everyman's Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo Turbo S. You get about three quarters of the performance at a third of the price. I mean, I'm pretty sure Kia is gonna sell as many of these things as they can make. All right, so remember the newly discontinued BMW i3, yeah? Well, BMW seems to have had a monumental shift in design philosophy when it comes to EVs. I think Tesla basically showed the world that people prefer EVs that still look somewhat like traditional cars. And look, beyond that, the i3 had some significant range issues, to put it mildly. So the i4 isn't a new purpose-built EV. It's actually based off of what I believe to be BMW's best small car, the 4 Series Grand Coupe. And unlike the 3 Series, this thing's a hatchback, and I love that. All right, so there's gonna be two versions. There's the base model, the E-Drive 40, that starts in the mid 50s, and it comes with a strong enough 335 horsepower single motor that powers just the rear wheels. Zero to 60 is gonna come in the low fives, and range is gonna to top out at about 300 miles. All right, so if you're looking for some real juice though, you're gonna to have to step up to the range topping M50 with over 500 horsepower and accelerations that's fast, even faster than the Model 3 performance. As with everything though, EV power comes at a price and with this fella, range is gonna to drop to about 270 miles, which is still plenty if you ask me. Oh, and for the privilege of driving the M50, be prepared to drop around 70 grand. All right, so one of the more controversial designs in the group, and I'm talking about the BMW iX. On paper, this thing is doing everything right. I mean, it's not too big, it's not too small. It's just about the same size as the X5, which in my opinion is about perfect if you don't need a third row of seats. So range is a very solid 324 miles and the power is strong. 60 miles an hour coming in the low four second range. And if that's not enough for you, there's gonna be a stupid fast M60 version with over 600 horsepower and 800 pound feet of torque, but that's coming a bit later. Okay, so here's the thing, it's expensive and you'll easily end up in the 90K plus range. Styling wise, it does kind of grow on you a bit, but I wouldn't exactly call this thing beautiful. No, look, on the inside though, Damn, this thing's awesome. I mean, personally, I think this is one of the best design interiors I've seen like in a while. 
All right, the F-150 Lightning. And look, I really thought this was gonna just mop up the EV truck competition. I mean, it sort of sounded too good to be true and wouldn't you know it, it sort of is. Now, it's very well designed and it's a capable truck, no argument there. The issue I have is how I feel the public was sort of, I don't know, misled when it comes to the whole pricing structure of this crazy thing. Or quote unquote, under 40K is something I'm sure you've heard lots of times about this fella. But yeah, that's for the base version with a small battery. If you want the real battery and some strong motors, you're really looking at dropping well into the 70s and even upwards of 80 grand and even more from there. But look, online, lots and lots of people are pretty upset after Ford opened up the configurator, but all right, price aside, it's good. So look, at least it's good, right? All right, so the Cadillac Lyric. And this one's pretty exciting. That is assuming they don't follow Ford's lead when it comes to the whole pricing structure. So let's get the numbers out of the way. Over 300 miles of range and a starting price of under 60 grand. And it's nice, and it looks nice inside and out. The Lyric will likely be offered as a rear wheel drive single motor config first, with horsepower coming in at about 340 and we're looking at torque numbers about 325 you know not bad an all-wheel drive version with double motors and well over 500 horsepower is expected to follow though i think cadillac could really have a winner here as long as it isn't one of those yeah it starts under 60 grand but it's really like impossible to leave the dealership without dropping 90 grand kind of things i'm really pulling for you cadillac all right so the first Benzo on the list, I'm talking about the EQB. And as of right now, deliveries are expected to start in July, but yeah, literally everything is getting delayed these days. So take this day and all the dates mentioned with a grain of salt, all right? Anyhow, so size-wise, it's about the size of a Model Y, which I, which I dig, it's the right size. Pricing seems to be relatively competitive also, starting at about 48 grand. And that's the good news. Now it looks like there's only gonna be one battery offered here in the States and it's not exactly great. I mean, 66.5 kilowatt hours, which should be good for about 200 miles of range, which sort of puts this thing at a significant disadvantage, kind of right off the get. For some more bad news, let's just take a look at the motors. So there's gonna be two trims offered here in the States. You got the EQB300 and the EQB350. Both models will have all wheel drive and two motor standard with the EQB300 offering up a pretty weak 225 horsepower and 288 pound feet of torque. And things really don't get that much better with the EQB350. If that you know, only jumps the power up to 288 horse and 384 torque. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure this thing's actually gonna be able to compete with the likes of Tesla or what Korea's been making lately. I mean, it's just gonna be sort of hard to recommend this one for sure. Yo, Toyota, welcome to the party. We didn't think you were gonna show. Yeah, the company that was just so far ahead of everybody in the hybrid game. Well, they've somehow completely missed the whole EV thing and I've got no freaking idea how they managed to do that. Anyway, so we've got this BZ4X to look forward to and despite this absurdly dumb name, I bet you they sell a ton of these. It's got some competition though, as it's going head to head with the Volkswagen ID4, the Nissan Aria, the Ionic 5, you know, the Model Y, all that stuff, which are all pretty solid. All right, we're expecting pricing to start at about 40 grand for the entry level single motor front wheel drive version. And pricing is gonna go up from there when we're looking at the all wheel drive double motor versions. Now, we're not sure exactly what kind of power these things are gonna make, but judging by the reported zero to 60, times like it's just not a lot of power yeah we're looking at zero to 60 times of between 7.7 .7 and 8.4 seconds so again this is just not gonna have any balls but that's okay not everybody really cares about flat out acceleration and if you don't i don't know this might be right up your alley range wise we're seeing reports of quote unquote up to 250 miles which i'm assuming is going to be for the single motor slow one and we're guessing the range is gonna to drop to about 220 miles for the faster double motor version. All right, so does this thing look a little familiar? Yeah, well it should, as it's basically the same thing as the Toyota BZ, whatever that thing is called, as they were developed together and they share tons of the same pieces and specs. So 
All right, what is the difference? Well, we're expecting pricing to start closer to the high 40s or even 50K flat. So I don't believe there's gonna be an entry level single motor two wheel drive version. I mean, this is Subaru, right? Now, look, I could be wrong, but I doubt it. We're also expecting this fella to be a bit sportier than the Toyota. And that leads us back to the big question. Yeah, what is the difference? So Subaru did oversee the all wheel drive and chassis tuning for this guy. And if there's one thing Subaru knows, it's all wheel drive systems, right? So we're also hearing rumors of an STI version in the future, which could be pretty exciting. Otherwise expect it to, you know, to be a little bit slow like the Toyota, I guess. So the Koreans have sort of figured this whole EV thing out, it seems. We already have the Honda Ionic 5 and the Kia EV6, which are both sort of all-stars in the making. Well, the final part of the triad is just about here and it should be pretty good. So the Ionic 5 a little bit too retro for you and the EV6 a little bit too, uh, I don't know, Kia for you? Or maybe you just got deeper pockets but you don't want a giant ass SUV. Well, Genesis is here and this might be what you're looking for. It's been developed on the same platform as the other two Korean All-Stars and will have the same 77.4 kilowatt hour battery that should be good for at least 270 miles and maybe more, for, especially from the single motor version. So it's gonna be a bit rougher on the wallet from the other guys, but hey, look, that's not exactly a surprise, right? Anyway, we're expecting pricing to start at about 55K for the entry level version and the top trim fast fella is gonna ding you close to 70 grand. Yeah, look, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Cars, I mean, just like regular cars are just getting like mega expensive, right? All right, so last thing, the styling, and I'm not exactly sure what to say here. I mean, I'd like to spend you know, a little bit more time with it, but my first reaction is that Genesis just sort of lost something in translation. I mean, compare this to the just like mega handsome GV70 and the GV80. I don't know. Personally, I think this is the worst looking of the three, but then again, the BMW iX is sort of growing on me, so I'm not sure you want to take my advice here. Either way, it'll likely be a hit, and the shape will probably soften a little bit with time. All right, so the second and the last Benzo on the list is this fella, the EQE. Okay, so something has just sort of occurred to me. You see, I've been looking at the specs of this thing along with the EQB and yeah, look, I'm just not impressed with the just super lack of horsepower, but Mercedes must be keeping room open for the various AMG models, which will ultimately follow. And why not? They can charge huge premiums for these and they don't really cost all that much more to make. I mean, it's basically where Mercedes makes bank. I say that because it appears that the EQE will initially only be offered with a single motor rear wheel drive configuration that's gonna make less than 300 horsepower. Like 60 miles an hour, it's still gonna come in a pretty quick 5.6 seconds, which is okay. But when you're looking at a starting price of like 80 grand, I kind of expect a little bit more performance, but I don't know. Then again, like who is this model really made for? Believe it or not, Nissan dropped the Leaf over 10 years ago. Yeah, I know it's been that long. And yeah, you, me, we've all kind of just gotten old it seems. Anyway, so what the hell has Nissan been up to since then? I mean, it's been quite a drought as I think we were all sort of expecting more EVs after the success of the Leaf. Well, here we are and it might've been worth the wait. And here it is, the Aria, and it's set for deliveries this fall. We just recently did a full video on the Aria, so check it out if this thing's your style. We like it, and it's a welcome competitor to the small to mid-sized electric SUV space that's more or less dominated by the Model Y. All right, numbers-wise, it does a pretty good job keeping up with Master Elon's creation with the top trim delivering almost 400 horsepower and a zero to 60 time of about five seconds flat. Plenty fast enough, and range will top out at a pretty cool 300 miles. Overall, a solid package and a real competitor in the space. Style-wise, we're kind of digging what's going on as I think it might be one of the more handsome fellows in the group. And consider the fact that Nissan has been mass producing EVs for well over a decade. So consumer confidence should be pretty high. And look, it's just a safe bet. It's a stylish bet, especially if everybody on your block already has a Model Y. All right, hailing from our Nordic friends up there in Sweden, 
Let's take a look at the Polestar 3. Well, there's really not much to look at, which is going to make this section a bit of a challenge for our editor. I'm guessing we're probably going to be seeing this camo shot quite a bit. So anyway, there's really not all that much info on this guy. And to be totally honest, while everything else on this list will almost certainly be released this calendar year, I'm just, I'm not too sure about this fella. So it's an SUV, but it's sort of a bigger and sportier SUV than we had originally thought. Volvo, I mean, Polestar are targeting the Porsche Cayenne as its benchmark, not the McCann or Model Y. So that's interesting. Price-wise, not a lot of info, but Car and Driver is expecting this thing to start in like the high 70s or so. What's unique here though is that Polestar is going all in bananas with LiDAR to deliver true level three autonomy, meaning the driver's not gonna have to do like, well, anything. Now, I wouldn't necessarily expect this tech to be fully functional right out of the gate, but look, it's a step in the right direction. All right, another instant contender from Korea. And we're looking at an electric version of their already pretty great G80. I know, I know, it's not a purpose-built EV from the ground up, but I think that's okay. Mostly because we just really dig the styling here. I mean, take a look at the GV60, for example. And while I think the GV70 is just way better looking, car makers for some reason just seem to smack the EV versions of their vehicles with the sort of ugly stick, sort of. Anyway, to go along with that handsome outside and it's punching above its weight class interior, you get some decent specs too. Range wise, we're looking at a you know, pretty decent 250 miles or so. All wheel drive is standard and power is coming from two motors making a combined 364 horsepower. Look, you're not gonna win many drag races here, but I really don't think the people buying this car are gonna be into like stupid performance. What's great here though, and what's always been great about Genesis is value. Yeah, this everyman's S-Class, even in electric trim, is gonna start at a super reasonable 60K. And yeah, you're probably gonna end up in the mid 70s when you're all set, but compared to something like the Mercedes EQE, this sort of just crushes it in a lot of important places. I mean, which one would you choose? All right, so remember that very oddly named electric Toyota, the BZ4X YM LMNOP and its relative weakness in the cojones department? Well, Toyota's got a plan to address that and it comes to us as a Lexus. Yep, the first fully electric Lexus, the RZ450E. Now, it's gonna be pretty much what you'd expect. And while the Lexus shares a platform with the Toyota and Subaru, it's gonna have 100% unique to Lexus styling with no shared body panels, which is pretty cool. Yeah, this is better looking. As with all Lexus versions of Toyotas, it's gonna be much nicer on the inside with leather and all the fixings, but that's gonna come out of a bit of a premium as pricing is expected to start about 10 grand higher than the Toyota. Okay, so power. While the Toyota is pretty weak, the new Lexus is gonna produce a solid 402 horsepower and 442 pound-feet of torque. Nice, a big improvement for sure and reason enough to stretch to get this guy in your garage rather than the Toyota. We'll have to see how exactly the pricing works out, but this has a chance to continue Lexus's domination of creating nice vehicles for the status conscious and car obtuse. I don't, look, maybe a little harsh, I don't know. You guys ever know a car guy to drive a Lexus? Just saying. If you've been around our channel a bit, it is pretty obvious that we're sort of big canoe fans here and for good reason. Now, before we get into it, yeah, look, we'll have to see how many of these canoe will be able to deliver before 2022 comes to a close. We're rooting for them big time, but yeah, it's hard. It is very hard for new EV companies to come to market, but we think these guys have as good a chance as anybody anyway, and there's no other way to put this. This thing is awesome and it just has huge potential. In my opinion, it just sort of lives in the space between a van and an SUV. There's an adventure trim that certainly feels more SUV and it's probably going to be the most sought after trim. The starting price is a very ambitious sub 35K and range is going to top out about 250 miles or so. Oh, and get this, there may even be a 600 horsepower version of this thing. 
There's also a trick flatbed pickup version that's very cool. Yeah, just so much to like and boy, I hope they can pull it off. Seriously though, if you're unfamiliar with these guys, we have several videos that go into tons of detail. So please just go check them out. Okay, so this one's a bit out there and look, I'll admit, I haven't really been taking these guys all that seriously, but it looks like they're actually gonna make a real go of it. So here we are, VinFast, believe it or not, is a Vietnamese company that sort of came out of nowhere. They're aiming to start selling two SUVs before the end of the year, the VF8 and the VF9. The VF8 is the smaller five passenger model, while the VF9 is the larger six to seven passenger model. And it looks like both models are gonna come standard with all wheel drive and power is gonna come out to a decent 402 horsepower. Pricing is a bit different here as VinFast will be looking to separate the cost of the car from the battery. So you can lease the battery in some way. Look, I'm really not sure how that's gonna work and it's probably not even worth getting into right now. Styling is, well, it's pretty generic and I don't see this thing winning the hearts and minds of the general public, which really, really just gives them sort of one road to success in my opinion. And that road is cost. They can produce and sell these things at a significant discount to the competition maybe they'll sell otherwise i'm just not seeing the appeal i don't know like am i supposed to go with this over a model y or something i, I just don't think so but look i'm gonna keep an open mind and we'll just keep an eye on these guys so there's lots and lots and lots of hype surrounding the brand new revival of fisker remember this fisker karma the beautiful flowing coupe sedan thing yeah, it was striking to say the least, a truly beautiful modern car by just about any measure. Unfortunately, it sort of failed and the world has sort of changed. So people aren't really buying cars like they used to. So it makes perfect sense that Henrik would develop an SUV. There's an awful lot to like here too. Specifically, the entry level trim might just be the best bang for your buck EV champion. A 250 mile range in that package for a starting price under 38 grand. Factor in a little help from Uncle Sam via tax rebates and this thing might just be hard to beat in terms of value and style for your money. The only issue is that they'll start producing the range topping big motor and long range versions first, which are mega quick. 0 to 60, 3.6 seconds and range wise, we're looking at 350 miles, but that does mean the affordable versions may not come until well into 2025. Yeah, it's a pretty cool package, a great value at the low end, and yeah, still something pretty special even at the high end. The only thing, and I might be in the minority here, styling wise, well, to me it just sort of lacks that visual drama that so many of his previous designs just had in spades. <laughs> 